All right, guys. It is a cold, gloomy day here in paradise in the end times. So on Sunday morning, September 9th, 2018, we are in an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia is all I'm allowed to say. And uh, since it is Sunday morning, I... Uh, it's time for me to bring you my weekly doomsday sermon. Uh, I cannot remember. Oh man, who was the Alert Tribe member? It might have been Brother Aaron sending me George Monbiot's latest uh, essay in The Guardian. And, uh, good old George, you know, I, I like this guy. I think that he might be into nuclear power, but that we all have a blind spot. But at least George fully understands the, uh, the the hopelessness of the situation. So dive right into it, George, and tell us how we won't save the Earth with a better kind of disposable coffee cup. We must challenge the corporations that urge us to live in a throwaway society rather than seeking greener ways of maintaining the status quo. <coughs> yeah, so spell it out for us, George. Brother George, amen. Uh, now, I'm going to put the link to this, uh, to this piece from The Guardian and encourage you to read it yourself, but if you just want your old doomsday preacher to read it for you, I will be happy to do that. Take it away, Brother George. <clears throat> Do you believe in miracles? If so, please form an orderly queue. Plenty of people imagine we can carry on as we are as long as we substitute one material for another. Last month, a request to Starbucks and Costa to replace their plastic coffee cups with cups made from cornstarch was retweeted 60,000 times before it was deleted. Those who supported this call failed to ask themselves where the cornstarch would come from, how much land would be needed to grow it, or how much food production it would replace. They overlooked the damage this cultivation would inflict. Growing corn is notorious for causing soil erosion and often requires heavy doses of pesticides and fertilizers. The problem is not just plastic. It is mass disposability. Or, to put it another way, the problem is pursuing on the one planet known to harbor life, a four-planet lifestyle. Regardless of what we consume, the sheer volume of consumption is overwhelming the Earth's living systems. Don't get me wrong, our greed for plastic is a major environmental blight, and the campaigns to limit its use are well motivated and sometimes effective, but we cannot address our environmental crisis by swapping one overused resource for another. When I challenged that call, you know, about this uh, plastic cup switch over to, to cornstarch, when I challenged that call, some people asked me, so, what should we use instead? The right question is, how should we live? But systemic thinking is an endangered species. Part of the problem is the source of the plastic campaigns. David Attenborough's Blue Planet 2 series the first six episodes had strong, coherent narratives, but the seventh, which sought to explain the threats facing the wonderful creatures 
the series revealed, darted from one issue to another. We were told we could do something about the destruction of ocean life. We were not told what. There was no explanation of why the problems are happening and what forces are responsible or how they can be engaged. Amid the general incoherence, one contributor stated, quote, it comes down, I think, to us each taking responsibility for the personal choices in our everyday lives. That is all any of us can be expected to do, close quote. <clears throat> this perfectly represents the mistaken belief that a better form of consumerism will save the planet. The problems we face are structural. A political system captured by commercial interest and an economic system that seeks endless growth. Of course, we should try to minimize our impacts, but, meaning our personal impacts, you know, through our daily lifestyle and consumer choices, of course we should try to minimize our own impacts, but we cannot confront these forces by merely by taking responsibility for what we consume. Unfortunately, these are issues that the BBC in general and David Attenborough in particular avoid. I admire David Attenborough in many ways, but I am no fan of his environmentalism. For many years, it was almost undetectable. When he did at last speak out, he avoided challenging power, either speaking in vague terms or focusing on problems for which powerful interests are not responsible. This tendency may explain Blue Planet's skirting of the obvious issues. The most obvious uh, uh, of, the, of the issues, the most obvious is the fishing industry, which turns the astonishing life forms the rest of the series depicted into seafood. This, this is why your old eco-Nazi makes the personal lifestyle and consumer choice not to consume seafood. Anyway, the most obvious is the fishing industry, which turns the astonishing life forms the rest of the series depicted into seafood. Throughout the oceans, this industry, driven by our appetites and protected by governments, is causing cascading ecological collapse. Yet, the only fishery the program featured was among the 1% that are in recovery. It was charming to see how Norwegian herring boats seek to avoid killing orcas, but we were given no idea of how unusual that is. Even marine plastic is in large part a fishing issue. It turns out that 46% of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which has come to symbolize our throwaway society, is in fact composed of discarded fishing nets. And much of the rest consists of other kinds of fishing gear. Abandoned fishing materials tend to be far more dangerous to marine life than other forms of waste. As for the bags and bottles contributing to the disaster, the Great 
majority of those arise in poorer nations without good disposal systems. But because this point was not made, we look to the wrong places for solutions. From this misdirection arise a thousand perversities. One prominent environmentalist posted a picture of the king prawns she had bought, celebrating the fact that she had persuaded the supermarket to put them in her own container rather than a plastic bag and linking this to the protection of the oceans. But buying prawns causes many more time, many times more damage to marine life than any plastic in which they are wrapped. Prawn fishing has the highest rate of bycatch of any fishery, scooping up vast numbers of turtles and other threatened species. Prawn farming is just as bad, eliminating tracts of mangrove forest, crucial nurseries for thousands of species. We are kept remarkably ignorant of such issues. As consumers, we are confused, bamboozled, and almost powerless, and corporate power has gone to great lengths to persuade us to see ourselves this way. The BBC's approach to environmental issues is highly, yes, excuse me, I have a polar bear kissing me in the face. The BBC's approach, and some people might say the Guardian's approach to environmental issues is highly partisan, siding with a system yes. that has sought to transfer responsibility for structural forces to individual shoppers, yet it is only as citizens taking political action that we can promote meaningful change. The answer to the question, how should we live, is simply. But living simply is highly complicated. In Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, the government massacred the simple lifers. This is generally unnecessary. Today, they can safely be marginalized, insulted, and dismissed. The ideology of consumption is so prevalent that it has become invisible. It, it is the plastic soup in which we swim. One planet living, as opposed to four planet living, means not only seeking to reduce our own consumption, but also mobilizing against the system that promotes the great tide of junk. This means fighting corporate power, changing political outcomes, and challenging the growth-based, world-consuming system we call capitalism. As last month's Hot House Earth paper, which warned the danger of flipping the planet into a new, irreversible climatic state, concluded, incremental linear changes are not enough to stabilize the Earth system. Widespread, rapid, and fundamental transformations will likely be required to redu reduce the risk of crossing the threshold, close quote. And winding up George's uh, sermon, disposable coffee cups made from new materials are not just a non-solution, they are a perpetuation of the problem. Defending the planet means changing the world. 
amen brother George but of course now I am going to uh, to dig just one layer more deeply into this ocean uh, into this onion and point out to George and the Guardian that there is no way number one uh, other than a tiny few of us are going to reduce our own consumption and there is no way in hell that the the proles uh, the clueless morons are going to do anything to fight corporate power to change political act outcomes and above all to challenge the growth-based world consuming system we call capitalism and this is the reason we are so fucked uh, you, you know it's your damn little plastic straw bands uh, that the that these deluded little greenies actually believe for one second that banning plastic straws is gonna save this planet it gives these little limp dick greeny environmentalists just license to go on about with their little mutual admiration societies patting each other uh, on their clueless fucking moron shoulders you know, the entire system has to come down. Now, the entire system is going to come down. Make no mistake about it. The collapse of global industrial civilization is on the near horizon, but it is in no way, shape, or form going to be a voluntary uh, collapse uh, of this system. This system is going to implode upon itself. And uh, then we will see uh, what, if anything, uh, comes crawling out of the ashes uh, when, when this whole uh, unsustainable house of cards comes crashing down. And uh, when it does, we will see what George Monbio has to say about it. But, you know. Uh, amen, Brother George, and thank you, The Guardian, uh, for pointing out the obvious. Uh, and, of course, I would like to mention in today's uh, e email, somehow on Sunday, what I get every Sunday from The Guardian is from their travel and leisure section, where uh, The Guardian, when they're not talking about uh, our our consumer and lifestyle choices not being enough to save the planet on one on the opinion page what they do is talk about all of these great vacations that uh, th these nice leisurely vacations that they're recommending to Hambone Little Tail to go flying around the planet in, in, in uh, what does Andy call them the easy jet all the the guardian giving me all the various ways to fly around the planet in an easy jet and uh, enjoy my leisure time in the end times anyway I think I have some farm fresh organic eggs on the stove with my name on it and I shall answer the call of the organic farm fresh eggs eat all the organic farm fresh eggs you can while you still can bye guys